Hey guys, what's up? It's Pseudo Pluto here, and this is very similar to the previous video that I made about Fedora. But it's basically saying uh, why OpenSUSE could catch up to Fedora if it really wanted to um, and take the number two spot of desktop Linux away from Ubuntu. But yeah, um, <laughs> uh, I, I wasn't originally going to make this video because my OpenSUSE days were long in the past. Oh, let me just drink some, some coffee real quick. But in writing the notes for that video, I did some, some research just to see what other people were doing. And it was funny to see that the problems that I had with OpenSUSE almost like five years ago now, you know, half a decade, is, is still <laughs> submitted three days ago. Holy crap. It's, it's still there. And submitted two days ago. Um, <laughs> nothing has changed with this distribution. And I think it's 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 kind of funny but it's also kind of sad um but yeah let me just get why why open is so stale and how it can catch up to uh fedora if it wants to for desktop linux um so we talked about all the all the things that red hat and fedora have been doing for desktop linux in the past eight years um but what has uh, OpenSUSE been doing in that in that same time? You know, we already know that Ubuntu has been doing nothing. But what have what have what have the chameleons been up to? Um, so, OpenSUSE has some really cool technology actually um, that kind of gets shadowed by their their problems. You know, they have very strong KD support. Um, they're probably one of the only one of the big threes that have you know like a tier one uh, KD distribution. They have a tested rolling release distribution, which is kind of a amazing thing if you think about it, right? They've automated, you know, GUI testing of um, their rolling releases of like, you know, GNOME and KDE and stuff like that. Um, I would check out OpenQA if you get the chance. It's a really cool piece of technology. And um, I do hope that Fedora adopts it for the future. I think they actually are adopting parts of it. Um, they have a strong support of all the Red Hat-led um, modern desktop, Linux desktop components. So they have strong support for Wayland and Flatpak and LibInput and Pipewire and etc. 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 They were one of the first ones to adopt ButterFS and they have Snapper, which is a really cool um, snapshot tool that every time you do a package manager operation, you take a ButterFS snapshot of your file system. And if for some reason that upgrade goes bad, you can roll it back uh, to before you completed that transaction, which is really cool and really ties into the whole rolling release part, right? Where if you're using this, something like Arch and you have a bad update, you know, you're, you kind of have to fix it. Meanwhile, for OpenSUSE, if you have a bad update, you just roll back and then just wait for things to iron out. Um, and then just update later. And finally, they have the open build service, which is really cool. Um, if you remember Ubuntu's like launchpad, it's basically like that, and GitHub had a child. Um, and it brings like this really cool like GitHub style approach to packaging and creating packages for OpenSUSE. So OpenSUSE does have a lot of you know, competitive advantages, at least compared with something like um, Ubuntu. Uh, they have all this cool technology and all this cool work done. But if they want to be a, like, a strong contender for, you know, the, the Linux desktop, there are some huge paper cuts that, you know, I've experienced five years ago when I was, like, just real hopping and trying it out. And then... As you can see in the Reddit threads for our OpenSUSE, still exists today, and a lot of it is based off of just the polish um, and the kind of packaging mentality that goes behind uh, creating the final uh, desktop release. So, the first paper cut is really linked together. Um, it's the choice of dependencies for packages. Um, so they have patterns, which is basically like a meta package or like groups in Fedora. And these patterns are ridiculous. Um, I don't know if you've ever installed OpenSUSE, but uh, when you install, you know, the default OpenSUSE pattern, right? The OpenSUSE desktop for GNOME, you'll install like three VLC clients, sorry, VNC clients. You'll install, you know, every single LibreOffice thing known to mankind. 
Uh, you'll install Pigeon for GNOME, which I don't know why you're installing that by default anymore. Um, everybody's using, you know, Facebook Messenger and Gchat, stuff like that. Who uses Pigeon? Uh, it's a very kitchen sink, but even more so kind of approach to package selection. And that's really true with the rec recommended packages, right? If you install something, you end up pulling a bunch of dependencies. And because of the recursive nature of dependencies, um, and the fact that recommended packages are on by default, is that, you know, when you install a program, you you get everything, every possible dependency under the sun pulled alongside that program, as well as all the possible dependencies of those dependencies. And, and you know how exponentially that grows. So what ends up happening with these overzealous patterns and these strong recommendations for, for packages is that a normal install of OpenSUSE is just, and, and pardon my language, right? It's, it's, it's a bloated pile of crap with no refinement. Um, if you look at the default uh, application selection for Fedora, right? Uh, you can see that, you know, Nim uh, uh, GIMP was installed by default, right? Firefox was there, yeah. Text editor was there, settings was there. But all this other stuff I install myself because I know what I want to use. Um, like, I can't see anything that was forced upon me. Like, Rhythmbox, okay, cool, that's cool. Like, Fedora does it very well, and I, I, th and I think Ubuntu does it well, does it well as well, where they really tone back all the packages they install and let the user end up using the App Store um, to discover their own packages instead of forcing it upon them. And there's kind of something ridiculous that I read back in the day when they were trying to justify this. And it was like, uh, oh, not everybody has high-speed internet. Um, so therefore, we want to fit as many packages as we want onto the ISO. A and, and to that, I say, like, bullshit. You know, everybody's watching YouTube videos nowadays. I'm sure they can spare the bandwidth to download the extra packages that they need instead of being forced to download everything onto a DVD-sized ISO to make a live media. Like, it, it's just ridiculous. Um, some other weaknesses are uh, the weak third-party repo support. So Pac-Man doesn't have a North America mirror, which means that downloads are very slow. And for a rolling release like Tumbleweed, right, that makes updates very painful, very, very painful. And just in general, um, Compared to RPM Fusion, Pac-Man does a good job, but it's still not as polished, uh, especially in terms of like documentation and stuff, compared to RPM Fusion. And going back to documentation, uh, OpenSUSE, OpenSUSE's wiki is kind of rough. And when you don't have the same amount of users as something as Fedora or Ubuntu, and you need to Google solutions to problems, Having something like the Arch Wiki, some treasure trove of information that's kept up to date and well reviewed, is indispensable, right? Because it's a chicken and egg problem. Like you can't let the community come up with good documentation if you don't have a large enough community. And you can't have a large enough community if people can't figure out how to use a distribution. So you're going to have to kind of kickstart that with some some good documentation written by contributors. So that's one area for definite improvement. Um, and the last one is, I'm not too sure how I'm actually on this point. It goes back to what I talked about Fedora, about having the latest packages for like gaming, for example, right? Uh, where you have the latest kernel and the latest Mesa versions uh, for the open source drivers. Um, it's more in the fact that, and if I'll go back to the OpenSUSE Reddit, right? You'll see that people complain about how did I? Uh, people are complaining about you know the latest tumbleweed update, uh, latest on tumbleweed. Uh, Dolphin broke. Wow. Okay. Cool. Um, so even though there's open QA and a lot of testing on tumbleweed, it does break a lot. But meanwhile, their other offering, Leap, is a bit too slow for most people, um, and so they don't really have an answer to that sweet spot. That's for our workstation. Uh, and so what's the answer to that? I have no idea. Um, either you improve the QA that you can actually have Tumbleweed be stable enough, 
But I think a lot of that also goes back to just having enough users to contribute enough like bug reports and to do enough testing. Um, that or you kind of slow things down and bring it more to a Fedora workstation type of um, pace and development, right? Where it's rolling but slowly rolling compared to the latest like factory or devil um, branch of packages. And so all I have to say about OpenSUSE is that it's so close yet so far. Um, it has a lot of the same ingredients as Fedora as well as some meaningful improvements on um, Fedora. It's just that the overall package itself is not that compelling and not that refined. Um, and it's a hard sell to why you'd want to use it over something like Fedora. And that kind of brings me to my last point, which is, well, what are you going to do about it? And for that, I'm just going to say nothing, really. Um, I'm not that invested, you know? I have a, I'm, I'm going to be working a full-time job. I'm a student right now. Um, I have a limited time. And I'm not going to spend it working on improving a distribution that I don't even use. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to share my thoughts about it. Um, if I was invested in OpenSUSE, or if something terrible happened to Fedora, right? Um, then what I would do is I would take very clear inspiration from both KD Neon and Fedora Workstation, right? KD Neon is a very good uh, representation of what an ideal uh, KD desktop would look like and Fedora Workstation is the same for GNOME. And I'd use that to both get functional KDE and GNOME desktop patterns. Um, and to really take that as a starting point and just work your way down the dependency tree and make sure that you're having sane recommends um, and sane patterns where you're not installing half of the available uh, repository uh, just because you'll want to have a DVD ISO size file. Um, <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous to say. Um, and for that, um, work on the documentation. That's pretty simple. Uh, make it flat pack first um, so users can avoid Pac-Man as much as possible. Uh, no offense to Pac-Man because you know they're doing a really good job and a really thankless job, um, obviously, um, considering how much I'm ragging on them. But flat pack is really the way that things are going and they should be going. Um, for third party software, it should be preferable to go to Flathub first before you try to go to a third party repository like Pac Man. Um, and in general, if I wanted to improve things, um, I feel like OpenSUSE could really use a lot of work on refinement. And for that, there's no better example um, than what uh, Nate is doing with KDE doing like a this week in KDE updates on all the paper cuts being fixed. Um, and yeah, so explain why I'm not that invested and why I'm probably not going to do anything about it, but why wait for me? Um, if you like OpenSUSE or you like the underdog or you just are bored and need something to do, you know, why not give this a shot? Um, the competition is good for everybody, right? And it's and it's it, the the reason why I went to stagnate it was that there was no competition until Fedora Workstation showed around, you know. Um, and so I, I don't think it's that likely, but we could face the same situation where you know Fedora and Red Hat kind of get complacent, and you know they need a kick in their butts from a new upstart to kind of um, improve things. But the good thing about competition is that everybody wins, um, and you're you're really forced to improve things. And so um, I really wish the, the best of the luck for the OpenSUSE project. And I really hope the new adaptable uh, Linux platform, which is, I think, kind of their spin on Fedora Silverblue. I couldn't tell too much from the blog post. Um, I really hope that works out, um, even if they don't go ending up this route to make a top tier desktop Linux distribution. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed my commentary or my points um, and if you didn't please please feel free to to let loose your disapproval and your harsh words in the comments yeah i hope you guys enjoyed and this is pseudo pluto out see you guys later